The loss of the British destroyer HMS Sheffield on the 4th of May 1982 came as a great shock to the British people during the early stages of the Falklands War. She was struck by a French-manufactured Exocet AM-39 missile launched from an Argentine Navy Super Etendard jet fighter. Twenty crew aboard the Sheffield were killed in the attack. The Argentines were desperate to sink one of the two British aircraft carriers supporting the task force sent to liberate the islands that Argentina had invaded on the 2nd of April 1982. The Sheffield was one of dozens of smaller warships that protected the big carriers. Britain was at a disadvantage in attempting to recapture the Falkland Islands. The Argentine Air Force and Naval Air Force had between them around 180 fast jets opposing just 21 Royal Navy Sea Harriers aboard the two aircraft carriers Hermes and Invincible. Without both carriers remaining intact, the entire operation, codenamed Corporate, would be doomed to failure as insufficient Sea Harriers would be available to achieve air superiority over the landing beaches and naval anchorages around the Falklands. Argentina knew this, and the British carriers remained the priority target for its handful of sophisticated super etendards and the handful of Exocet missiles Argentina possessed. Apart from the super etendards, the bulk of Argentina's air strength was rather outdated 1960s and 70s aircraft, Mirages, Daggers and Skyhawks, armed with conventional bombs. They launched almost suicidal low-level attacks on British shipping to attempt to disrupt landing preparations. But only the Super Etendards and their Exocet missiles were capable of taking on the carriers and sinking them. The British knew that in 1981 France had shipped five Super Etendards to Argentina, the second naval squadron was based 400 miles west of the Falklands at an airbase on the Rio Grande in Argentina. Two Exocets had been expended in the attack of the 4th of May 1982, with one hitting HMS Sheffield. The British believed that three Exocet missiles remained in storage at Rio Grande. The question was what to do about the aircraft and the missiles. The government wanted action taken before Argentina managed to bag a British aircraft carrier. And, in its desperation, the government turned to the Special Air Service Regiment, the famed SAS. They recalled an operation launched by Israeli Special Forces in 1976 to rescue hostages held at Uganda's Entebbe airport. In a Special Forces operation that stunned the world, Israel had landed C-130 Hercules transport aircraft on Entebbe Airport's runway, assaulted the terminal and rescued nearly all of the hostages, and also put out of action Ugandan Air Force MiG-17 and MiG-21 jet fighters. Taking their cue from the Israeli operation, the SAS hatched a plan to fly two RAF Hercules transport planes from Ascension Island in mid-Atlantic, another British colony, refueling them air-to-air -air all the way to Argentina. The C-130s would carry 55 heavily armed SAS. The aircraft would come in under Argentine radar, land on the main runway, and the SAS would spill out to assault the Super Etendards, their air and ground crews, and destroy the Exocet missiles. If the C-130s were still in flying condition after this, the force would then mount up and fly to the Chilean airbase at Punta Arenas, Chile being Britain's closest South American ally at the time. If the C-130s were wrecked, the SAS and the air crews would grab whatever transport they could find, and while geese style would hell for leather the 50 miles to the Chilean border with half the Argentine army and air force at their heels. To many in the SAS, this operation, codenamed Mikado, had all the hallmarks of a suicide mission, and there was some resistance. However, before Mikado would be considered for activation, the SAS needed eyes on the ground in Argentina. They needed to insert a reconnaissance team to watch the Super Etendard's airbase to allow proper planning to be conducted for the main raid. But this would be no mean feat. How could an eight-man SAS patrol be inserted 400 miles from the Falklands without the Argentinians finding out? 
Eventually, this operation, codenamed Plum Duff, would involve using a Royal Navy Sea King HC-4 helicopter from the aircraft carrier HMS Invincible. Stripped of all excess weight and equipment, the Sea King carried enough fuel to make a one-way trip only. The plan was simple. The Sea King, with a crew of three, would lift off from the Invincible carrying the 8 SAS, fly to Argentina, drop the SAS off close to Rio Grande, then fly into Chile, where the crew would dispose of the helicopter by sinking it just off the coast, after which they would make their way to the British Embassy. Operation Plum Duff launched on the 18th of May 1982 at quarter past midnight. Four hours later, the Sea King, flying low to avoid Argentine radar, approached the coast in thick fog. Twelve miles from the landing zone, the visibility was so poor that the Royal Marines' chief pilot landed. Unsure of their exact position, the SAS commander was convinced that the chopper had been detected by Argentine forces. He demanded that his team be dropped off close to the Chilean border. They would then march to Rio Grande Air Base and set up their observation post. After dropping off the SAS patrol, the Sea King flew onto a beach near Punta Arenas in Chile, landed, and the crew punched holes in the aircraft preparatory to ditching it in deep water. But the helicopter stubbornly refused to sink, so it was flown back to the beach and destroyed using an explosive charge. The three crewmen now made their way on foot over several nights, trying to reach a British diplomatic post. Captain Andy Legg, the SAS patrol commander, had decided that his team was compromised and aborted Plum Duff, marching into Chile. The air crew in the SAS were picked up by Chilean troops and briefly detained before being released to British diplomats. With the failure of Plum Duff, Operation Mikado was also cancelled. But just seven days later, the Super Etendard struck again. Two Exocet missiles were decoyed away from the carriers and struck the valuable cargo ship Atlantic Conveyor, which was loaded with helicopters and stores. But ultimately, the Argentines never managed to get near one of the British aircraft carriers, and the war finished before Argentina could mount another Exocet attack with its remaining missile. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also support my channel, PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.